Okay, now let's talk mandrels. If you are going to um, make beads, which is uh, one of the big things I do, um, you're going to need mandrels, which are stainless steel bars or rods, um, a certain thickness. They have, uh, they have different thicknesses, all different sizes, from very, very teeny to kind of fat. Um, you can get them, really you could get a big hole mandrel and this will make a really big hole like a medallion or something. Um, they even have them bigger than this but um, you can get anywhere from little skinny earring size. These can bend very easily though all the way up to a quarter inch thick. This is a quarter inch steel bar and then this is actually, if I can show it, this is actually a hollow mandrel and this is so you can blow off the end and actually blow out vessels and stuff. This is what I use to blow out vessels. It's a hollow, hollow stainless steel blow tube it's called so if you want to search for that. But there's all different sizes and shapes um, and these of course these ones here are not used yet. They're nice and shiny and what I like to do, um, which I feel helps a lot, um, is when they're brand new, um, they could have oils on them or, or something from the manufacturing process of them and so I like to scrub them down with a Brillo pad or an SOS pad or a steel wool, something like that. Um, even the scrubby side of a dish sponge, an old disp dish sponge you're not using anymore, um, just to get them totally cleaned off of any oils or any um, anything that might be on the mandrel from manufacturing it and also it can like leave little tiny hairline you can't even see them scratches which will help the bead release stick to them and I feel that helps a lot so if you're having issues with your bead release cracking or coming off you know when you're using them try scrubbing them down like I said and see if that helps you. Um, this one is already dipped in bead release as you can see. Um, if you actually were going to put glass straight onto the stainless steel mandrel it will fuse to it. So you need a barrier which is the bead release between the steel and the glass. So you, that's where the bead release comes in. And so my favorite bead release, and I've used a lot over the years, is the Dip and Go Sludge Ultra. Um, they used to have just regular sludge and blue sludge, um, and now they just have the, the Sludge Ultra. And I get mine at Aero Springs. They, they're the ones who make it, and it's like this blue-gray color. Um, they also have a Dip and Go blue sludge which is even stronger than this bead release and that's more for like boro so uh, but this one works great I love it but what I do is I usually put it in another container um, this is pretty much as tall as I need you know if you're gonna make it like a super long bead you might want a taller container for a longer dip um, but I usually put it in a, in a separate container because you water this down with just regular water if it gets too thick. And if you accidentally put too much water and you get it too thin, what are you going to do? So that's why I always put it in a separate container. So if I have to, I can always go and add some more of the thicker original one to actually get the right consistency I need. And so, and then you shake it. You could shake it. You can mix it. Um, however you want to do it, but it should be like a pancake batter, like a thick pancake batter consistency. Not sure if you could see that. Try to shake it a little bit. And how I dip my mandrels, I'm not sure how other people do it, but how I dip my mandrels is I put the mandrel in straight up and down pretty much. I swirl it a little bit, twist it, and then I bring it out slowly. And you want a consistent, um, you want a consistent thickness, but you don't want it too thick. As you can see, it's coated. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. It's coated, 
but it's not um, too thick and it's uh, even it's evenly all the way across if you have a big dollop on the end here um, it's probably way too thin and it's dripping off the end of your mandrel um, you don't want to be able to see any steel through there like a haze of steel so you want a nice thin coating but not uh, not too uh, thin and and not too thick you want to be able you want to see a barrier but you don't want it to be really thick if it's really thick and your bead release is cracking um, you might want to water down your uh, your bead release a little bit so anyway so then if I wanted a, 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 a longer one I would start on an angle first and then lift up to get a longer dip so just an FYI there and then also let's see, I got a thick one or no here's a regular thin one um, just an FYI um, if you actually pull it out quickly pull it out a lot faster it'll be a thicker coating and I don't know if you could tell that but then if you pull it out slowly it'll be a thinner coating and really all you need is a thin coating so you don't waste your bead release and it actually creates a, a stronger barrier being thinner than thicker uh, being thicker when you heat this because you have to preheat this in the flame and when you heat it that's what can cause cracking when it's too thick your mandrel expands, the bead release expands, and they don't expand at the same rate, and you end up cracking your bead release. So um, you want a nice thin coating, um, but you want it totally coated so you don't see any metal. So hopefully that helps on that. And on to the next thing. Okay, and then the next thing, the last thing I think for now, is tools. Um, another safety aspect, and this is a must, is you need the didymium lenses. You need to get a pair, look how old these are, they're taped up, they're so old, but um, you need a good pair of didymium glass lenses because there's a sodium flare on the soft glass that glows like a bright orange, orange yellow and uh, looking at that constantly is almost like looking at the sun and so you can eventually ruin your eyes so you really need didymium lenses they have all different styles shapes or whatever i think i got these because they were on sale um, but i'm due for new ones but anyways um, so you need a good pair of those if you're going to be doing boro you need um, at least a shade three lens for boro like a welder's lens for boro and i have like clip-ons that i could clip right over these um, for doing boro because boro um, is much brighter and even with these lenses on you'll almost be blinded by um, melting the colors the clear isn't so bad the clear you can get away with just using these but colors it really release a lot of um, glare and so it's very important to save your eyes if you want to use those and plus you know they're a safety feature they also protect your eyes like goggles um, and so there's a variety of tools you don't need a whole lot of tools to actually get started um, tweezers is a good idea tweezers to pull the glass off um, I have a shaper tool there's a variety of different shaper tools I have uh, all metal exacto which I, I the ends broken off I should get a new blade on there but an X-Acto knife for making cuts or shape, uh, you know, shapes into glass, like leaf lines and stuff like that. Um, I have the, the tweezers to make a hole in a bale. That's if I'm not gonna make beads. That's if I'm making a pendant. Um, smashers, which are really convenient. So if you make a round bead, you could put the glass in there and smash it flat. So that's really good. And they have small smashers for little things, and then they have bigger smashers. And they have different varieties of smashers too, um, in all different price ranges. So they have those. Of course you need um, a starter, um, fire starter for your torch. So you need that. Um, I have some big um, pincers 
that can hold glass. This is from Lauren Stump. I got this from Lauren Stump. He made these. And um, see how it has the little oval cut out there. Um, and so it's really convenient. You could put a little stub of glass in there. It'll like hold a little stub of glass. And you could just hold it like this and actually use up just about all of the glass on there. But it's really convenient for grabbing anything, big or small pieces of glass. If you're taking something back out of the kiln, or if you need to pick up a piece of hot glass that fell on your bench, these are great. Um, and then here's a lentil sma shaper, smasher. Um, they also have shapers um, that are two-part mold where you can actually shape. This one's a, a lentil and a, a, a chunky nugget. And so you would just smash the glass between there. Um, and then there's actually top molds. There's um, this mold for marvering by cones or what have you. Um, the back is also good to flatten. And um, so there's a lot of varieties. Little marble molds. These are marble molds. Um, but you really don't need a lot of these, you know, unless you're looking for a specific design. But it's always convenient to have an extra pad of graphite. So you can have the ta the marver on the top of your uh, torch, which is great, especially if you have an L marver, which is what I have now. It has the, the two sides of graphite. So you roll basically on both sides at the same time you're hitting it. And um, that's really convenient to make a really fast and even shape um, when you're rolling your glass. But just having these, I have, um, this was a big block and I had my dad uh, sawed them for me into little um, slabs. And these are convenient just to have on your workbench if you want to flatten glass or smoosh something or um, even pick it up to smash on another piece of glass uh, to flatten it. Um, these are really convenient to have around. Um, so you have all these shapers, but they're not really necessary. I mean, you can use a dinner knife, a spoon, as long as it's stainless steel, a good metal, and like the X-Acto knife. This is just a regular X-Acto knife. So it's really not, you know, a big deal. It's, you don't have to spend a lot of money on tools. And um, if you learn how to shape with just rolling it on gra rolling your beads on graphite and using gravity um, to shape and um, distort your glass the way you want it, um, you'll get a lot more experience that way. Learning how the glass flows and learning um, how to make it go the way you want to make it without using a lot of tools, it's like really great experience to have. So I highly recommend it. You don't need a lot of tools. Um, these are just some of the tools I have. And I don't use most of these. Um, I, mo I use this one a lot to shape um, sometimes bicones. I use this one a lot. But um, other than that, I use my L marver and my other marvers, and I use my shaping tools. I use like an X-Acto to shape, to shape my hearts or to cut lines and leaves or to um, do... Uh, you know, make any kind of designs, like make a dent for a, a smiley face or something like that. Um, I use this a lot, and I use my Lauren Stump Shaper. I use this a lot, and of course tweezers I use a lot. Um, scissors, these are, you have to get the glass super, super hot, and then take it out and cut really quickly with the scissors to actually cut. And I use this sometimes to make uh, leaves, fancy leaves, or mermaid tails, or something like that. Um, but not a whole lot either, you know. I don't do a lot of cutting. Uh, depends what I'm making. But anyways, oh, and then I have nippers. That's another good thing to have is nippers. Like if you're going to make cane, if you're going to make like a design inside a cane and you want to nip and make little chips of Marini cane, um, these are great to have. And also they're great to have if you make a big long stringer but it's thick at the end and you... Uh, don't want to melt it off, you can just snip it off with your snippers. These are great to have. And um, uh, when they get, when the blades get dull, you just loosen this and rotate them. Um, and so you can get a lot of use out of them. I haven't replaced these blades yet. I probably should though. I don't think they're that sharp, but they still work. So uh, just an FYI, here's some of the tools. And um, now I'm going to show you my favorite tool, which I didn't bring out, but I'll show you that in a second.
I forgot to show you this one. This is um, a um, optic mold. It's called an optic mold, and it's a small one. Look at my finger just fits in there. It's a small one, but these are great for making uh, shapes for Marini. They have stars, they have um, flowers, and they have ones that have a ton of um, different petals or, or triangles, you know. Uh, it depends on what you want. But these are great because you just heat a mass of glass and then you push the glass in there and you come out with this shape. And um, it's great for making Marini cane because you'll automatically have a flower shape. Like if you have a clear and then you put yellow around it for a flower, then you shove it in there and then you can encase the shape with clear again and you pull it out into a Marini cane and you have a flower automatically. Um, so you could get these. Um, I've also used um, the insides of uh, punches, like paper punches that you buy in the store. I took them apart because the inside is metal and I've gotten like a heart shape and I think I have a star shape um, that I actually use the same way as this. So I bought like a $7 paper punch and it was like the same as like a $20 or $30 optic mold that you buy. And it did the same thing. Um, it just, it's not as deep. The paper punches, of course, aren't that deep. They're only like that deep. So you don't get as much cane out, but hey, it still works. So FYI on that. So anyways, this is my favorite tool. This is a dental tool and I got it in like a multi, like a, a set of 10 or 15 different dental tools. But it has, if you could see it, well, I don't know how well you could see it, but it has this um, this almost spoon-like, angled spoon-like shape. And then on the other side, it's almost like a little spade comes to a point. And I think this is great because I use this to poke holes, especially, and I push it in the glass and I twist and it makes a nice big hole. And I use this to actually push glass around if I want to push it. Or I can dent it in and make like a little smiley face or what have you. Um, so I use this tool a lot. It's my favorite tool. And um, yeah, it's just in like a little, if you go to uh, Arrow Springs or, you know, other different pages, um, this is a great tool to have. But I love it. So of course, of course, one of the important things you're going to need is glass. And here's some of my glass. Um, this is just one rack of glass that I have um, that I keep covered with a, a baby, a baby blanket or baby or sheet from a, my my kids when they were small. But um, so you need glass. Um, there's a lot of different places you can buy glass. This is all soft glass here. This is all 104 soft glass. Um, there's also 96 um, COE. That's coefficient of expansion. How much it expands and contracts while it's heated and cooled. Um, so this is 104, which is basically the standard, I think, that most people use um, to make their beads or soft glass pendants. Um, there's also, but like I said before, there's also 96, there's bullseye, 90 COE, and then you get into borosilicate, which is 33 COE, and so you have a lot less cracking with borosilicate, but you need a much hotter flame to melt it. So just an FYI on that. But there's a lot of places you can buy your glass. You can buy it at um, ABR Imagery, um, Arrow Springs has their own line of really nice silver glass. I, I love their glass. Um, but they, they used to sell... Uh, but anyways, never mind. They used to sell regular glass, but they don't anymore. There's Franz Art Glass. There's Mountain Glass Arts. There's Olympic Color Rods. There's Hawako Glass. I mean, there's a lot of different glass suppliers online. Sundance Glass. Um, so uh, wherever you find... Uh, your glass, that's fine. Um, but mostly, for the most part, I use 104 unless I'm doing borosilicate, you know. And there's a lot of different glasses out there. These are all standard color glasses. But then, uh, in this cabinet here, you can see 
I got my cover on it. These are silver glass, you know, special silver glasses that I have, you know, from different companies. So I got the Aero Springs Belladonna glass. I have striking color silver glass, which is awesome. That's my favorite silver glass. Awesome. All silver infused glass, which is really cool. It's like Raku and Magic from Reichenbach. I have a lot of different colors in there. So, yeah, and there's a big range, you know, regular glass, you know, it's like $10 a pound for regular glass, um, you know, transparent glasses, you know, 10 to $12 a pound. And then you get the uh, opaques, which are 12 to 15 a pound, but then they go up from there. You can end up spending $100 a pound for certain glasses, if not more. So, uh, just an FYI, you do need a glass supply. <laughs> Okay, so I hope I covered pretty much everything that I needed to cover. Um, so basically, you know, a lot of um, glass blowing and the equipment and the tools and stuff are your preference. Um, but really, you know, besides a torch and a kiln and a safe work environment, fireproof and good ventilation, um, you can basically, you know, do whatever you want, you know. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And um, you can also, I wanted to also mention that um, you can actually, you know, like smash up bottles, like beer bottles and wine bottles and alcohol bottles and melt those down too. Um, I wouldn't recommend mixing um, that glass with any other glass though. So if you like smash a bottle I wouldn't even mix it with another bottle because the glasses aren't compatible for the most part um, I think they use around a 90 COE for most bottles um, I'm not positive on that, but I think a lot of them are around 90 COE But I've noticed that some of them are really hard to melt almost like boro So I'm not really sure and I think they just take a hodgepodge of scrap glass a lot of times to make bottles because um, they recycle them. And so I wouldn't recommend mixing them because with the, they wouldn't be compatible. And like all the glasses that I showed you, like the 104 COE glass is not compatible with 90 COE. Um, they will shatter. If you try to mix them together, they'll crack and shatter later and uh, mixing 104 with boro is even worse, <laughs> you know. But um, there are some instances where you can put a little bit of 96 COE like frit. They have frits a lot of times are in 96. And you could put it on the surface of a bead um, that's 104 and you'd be okay. I think the rule of thumb is only, you know, 5% of the bead mass can be the other color. And I wouldn't recommend encasing it. So, um, but just an FYI. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.